Welcome to the Further Light Podcast, presented by Wisconsin Freemasonry, helping you accomplish your Masonic goals through education and more light. And now, I present to you, Brother Chris Lutke. Listeners, scholars, brothers, this is Brother Chris Lidke, and today I want to talk about self-reflection. This is actually an idea that came out of a book club that I'm involved with down in southeastern Wisconsin, involving a number of us that get together about once a month. We read a book, we talk about it. Uh, In this case, Practical Freemasonry by Matt Gallagher, which I've mentioned a couple of times in this podcast already. And during that conversation this idea came up, the idea of self-reflection. And what happened is we were looking at the book, which is dense with lessons. There's a great deal in here. And someone asked the question, hey, with all of this in here, how do we actually use it? There's no way to take it in. And that very much parallels masonry. Think about all of the lessons, the working tools, the ideas, the concepts. I mean, we have a podcast about it, and it's not like I'm running short of material. So, how do you use that? How do you use all of these things? It's great to focus on one for a week, but how do you use them in your life? That's what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is the role of self-reflection, because what we're really doing in masonry is using these tools as we self-reflect on things that have gone on in our lives, So that the next time that issue comes up, that snap decision that we make is more likely to be a little bit closer to what might be more acceptable Masonically. So let's talk about the role of self-reflection in Masonry. How many times have you found yourself in a conundrum looking up at the ceiling fan or staring out the window thinking, why did I react that way? Well, don't fret. You're not alone. Many of us have found ourselves twiddling our thumbs over similar situations. As Mark Twain once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. And by the way, the Greeks, the Romans, everyone else has said something very similar. But not, let's, let's not get too somber here. I'm not talking about examining our life at the end of it to determine whether we were good or bad. I'm talking about examining it on a regular basis to learn, develop, and grow as people. The point is, self-reflection, as daunting as it may sound, can be the most enlightening journey you'll ever embark on. So let's take a quick trip down memory lane here, and I will make these connections to masonry. Give me, give me a chance here. So let's take this quick trip down memory lane. There was once a once, uh, well-known incident involving Thomas Edison and his countless attempts to invent the light bulb. It is said that after failing for the umpteenth time, a journalist asked him, how does it feel to fail a thousand times? Edison, with his trademark wit and witticism, replied, I haven't failed once. I've just found a thousand ways that don't work. This anecdote underlies the importance of self-reflection and our ability to reassess our failures and turn them into stepping stones for success. You can grow from your failure, but you can't grow from it if you ignore it. You can't grow from it if you forget that it ever happened. Edison's capacity to critically evaluate his failures, and there were a lot, and use them as fodder for future attempts highlights the pivotal role self-reflection plays in personal development. When we think about self-reflection, we tend to think of woo-woo people sitting around with yoga mats and tie-dye or whatever else, but really self-reflection is nothing more than looking at decisions or ideas that you make during the day and then exploring that. How would you have rather responded in the moment? What might you have done differently? And some of us do this all the time. Some have to concentrate on it. And I'm not talking about you have to sit down and journal and everything else. I'm talking about as you're driving home from work, thinking about that interaction with your boss. I'm talking about while you're sitting around at home, you know, maybe thinking about that interaction you had with your significant other, whatever the situation might be. 
So self-reflection for the uninitiated is like holding a mirror up to your actions, thoughts, and emotions. And by the way, it's something we're really bad at as a society today. A lot of people don't self-reflect. They don't want to. They don't want to look inside. It's the sort of thing that they find disconcerting. It's all about turning the spotlight inwards, assessing your reactions, understanding your triggers, and learning from them. Why did you react that way? Really stop and think about it. Here's a hypothetical situation. You have a particularly stressful day at work and you snap at a colleague. Instead of brushing it off and blaming it on the Monday blues, pause for a second and think about it. Why did you react that way? Was it genuinely because of the workload or was it something deeper? And this doesn't have to happen immediately after. You don't have to suddenly, you know, you do something and then you stop and you self-reflect immediately. What I'm talking about is maybe later in the day, you're sitting there, you're eating lunch, and you're thinking to yourself. And by the way, this is part of the problem with screens these days, is it takes away that self-reflection if I'm constantly flipping through the latest YouTube shorts or whatever it is. So... It's this introspection, this deep dive into why behind our action that can guide us towards personal growth. The journey may seem tricky, tricky, and let me tell you, sometimes it can feel like trudging through a swamp. Sometimes it can be painful. Sometimes going back to these really awkward experiences can be very uncomfortable. But that's the point. The destination is ultimately worth it. So let's talk about some of these benefits of self-reflection. Even if you're not convinced about this whole self-reflection thing, here are some reasons why you should incorporate it into your personal development. Understanding your emotional triggers. We've heard these concepts bounced around before, emotional triggers, this idea that you can be triggered by something and suddenly you have no control over your reaction. Well, reflecting on your action can help you identify what the trigger is And you'll realize that it wasn't having a bad day, but perhaps some deep unresolved issue that you can then go and resolve. Becoming a better person. It enhances your problem-solving skills. When you understand why you react the way you do, you can actively brainstorm solutions, thereby enhancing your problem-solving skills. It teaches you self-reflection in and of itself teaches you to stop and think. Okay, something is happening, it's fast-paced, do I have to react right now, or can I stop for an hour and think about what that response is going to be? Now, in some cases, you can't, but probably 90% of the time, even though it feels like you can't, you probably can. And self-reflection is really helpful in that moment. And promoting personal growth. By acknowledging your emotional responses, you become more self-aware, leading to personal growth. As the Light Tzu, the ancient Chinese philosopher, said, He who knows others is wise. He who knows himself is enlightened. And think about that. That's actually a brilliant point. Because we don't look inside ourselves. How often do you sit in lodge or anywhere else and you go, You did that thing. You did that other thing. But you really never look inside yourself and go, Wow, I probably should have done that different. Wow, that really was my fault. That interaction, that issue. Wow, I really could change how I handle that. We don't do that in today's day and age. You could argue the reasons why, from screens to being too busy to uh, changes in society. But the point of the fact is, we don't like looking inside ourselves. And maybe that's what everyone from the Buddha to every other mystic since has been saying. Look inside yourself. Improve yourself. Focus on improving yourself so that you can improve your community and society overall, which should sound really familiar to anyone who came into the lodge a few years ago under the old Wisconsin program because we had to say that. It was part of the posting at one time. So what does this have to do with masonry? Well, when we look at all of these tools, I mean, think about it. Think about just one of the slide lectures or one part. Think about the middle chamber, any part of the degrees or the lessons and what we have there. You have umpteen tools. You have all sorts of ideas and concepts. You will never memorize them all, nor are you likely to apply them all. But with self-reflection, what you can do is stop and think about what you did 
And it's when you stop and think after the action, after action report, for those of you who used to be military, it's that time where you can reflect on what happened and maybe how you can apply the tools in the future. That's the time when you go, hey, the square would have been good here. Hey, this idea would have been good there. And maybe you don't put in those terms. And by the way, most of us don't. We don't go, hey, you know, if I had just remembered the compass. No, we sit there and go, wow, why did I allow myself to go beyond my boundaries? Or to let my vices take hold? And so it's that translation that allows us to take the lessons of Freemasonry and apply them sort of retroactively to what we have just done. Now you sit there and you go, but in the moment, I didn't react that way. In the moment I got hostile, in the moment I got angry, whatever the situation is. Well, see, that's the trick. Masonry, the lessons of Masonry, when it comes to self-reflection, aren't there to suddenly change you. No one stood up from the altar and went, wow, I'm an EA. I have all these lessons and I'm a completely different person. It doesn't happen. No, what happens is over the years, you think about these ideas, the more you go to lodge, the more you're involved, the more you hear them, the more you're surrounded by them, which means when you reflect on your actions, they're going to come up. And that allows you to apply them in your thoughts, in your reflections, and it creates what's called the nudge. And this is an interesting principle in economics that has come out in the last 20 years or so. This idea that we can slowly nudge people in a specific direction. For example, an employer who wants people to save more might say, hey, you have to opt out of the 401k rather than opting in sort of encouraging you to do this thing. Well, the nudge is this idea that small changes, these little tiny pushes, can add up and create something much greater. That's masonry. Every time you self-reflect, every time you think about something that you did, those lessons of masonry that are sitting in the background, that are unconscious, hopefully, by the time you've been a mason for a couple of years, especially if you've been involved, those are going to slowly nudge you in a certain direction. And it's not going to be because you sit down and go, okay, I need to go through my working tools. It's going to be because you look at the other officers, people who have applied these lessons, and you're going to see how they react to things. And you're going to start reacting in similar ways. And then eventually other people will be reacting based on how you would react. That's the fraternity. We're passing down lessons. We're not passing down. We're not quoting each other constantly going, hey, think about the square. No, we're going, well, what would Bob have done in this circumstance? Because I really look up to him and he seems like the ultimate Mason. I really like the way he thinks. I really like the way he makes decisions. So I'm going to try and do things a little bit like him, but I'm also going to do them like Eric because I like how he handles things under certain circumstances, or Jim, because of how he handles things. And these lessons get passed down not through tools, but through people. And the way that those get passed down and move from the cognitive, I know what the square is, to the application, I'm actually using it, is through the filter of the other brothers that you see the lessons that you take in. And you take those in and you self-reflect on something that has happened and you go, what would these people have done? And guess what? You have now applied the tools of masonry. I mean, I'd love to tell you that there are mystical secrets in Roslyn Chapel and the gold is sitting in Oak Island and whatever else. But maybe this is the ultimate lesson. Finding enlightenment not by looking out and telling everyone else how to change, but by learning how to look inside and using the tools given to you by masonry as a framework for that self-reflection so that the next time something similar comes up, you can react a little bit differently.
you can grow and develop. So how do you incorporate self-reflection into a daily routine? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Some people journal. I know that takes a lot these days. Or simply think about things on your drive home. You always have time. Maybe you're standing in the shower for 10 minutes. And you have time to think about things. And that's a good time to self-reflect. Just what has happened? Why did it happen? And always focus on you. Don't focus on the other guy. You don't know why Bob did what Bob did. Focus on why you did what you did. And this isn't bashing on yourself. This is simply trying to determine if what you did was right or not and what would right look like. And maybe that definition changes from in the moment to a day later. In essence, self-reflection is a bridge that connects your past actions with your future reactions. It's a stepping stone that elevates you from being some kind of puppet For example, to your emotions or to the world around you and taking on a sense of self-agency, self-control, a sense that you have power over your own life. So you move from being a puppet to being the puppeteer. So do what you need to do. Grab a cup of tea or coffee and get ready to delve into the fascinating world of self-reflection. And remember, it's not just about what you see in the mirror, but what you understand from it. And as you embark on this journey of personal growth, bear in mind that every revelation, every realization is a step closer to your authentic self. And who knows, you might just end up lighting up your own life, much like Edison's glowing invention lit up the world. At the end of the day, you can't grow unless you acknowledge the failures of the past and use them to develop in the future. And that's all we're doing with self-reflection. But it's the missing lesson in Freemasonry. That's how we get from the working tools and the lessons and the pomp and the circumstance of the ritual to actually trying to make men better. But there is an active element to it. That active element is self-reflection. So take a few minutes at some point during the day. Reflect on your actions, reflect on where your life is, etc. And you too will become a better man. Thank you for joining me, Brother Chris Leakey, and the entire Further Light team on your quest to find more light through masonry. Are you interested in learning more about Freemasonry in Wisconsin? Visit wisconsinmasons.org to learn more about masonry and access further educational content and more light. Once again, that address is wimasons.org. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, please email us at education at wisconsinmasons.org. And thank you for listening.